Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the Friday edition of Bible Tract Echoes. I hope your week has been going well. I hope you've made time to spend with God each and every day, not only with God, but also encouraging other saints and then finding opportunities to tell lost people about the great loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who came and is willing to save any and all from their sin if they will receive him. What a great message we have to give. Well, right now, my Bible sits open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 will be our focus today. If you can, get your Bible and join me there, 2 Peter chapter 3. Also get something on which you can jot some notes. Before I do anything else, let me lead into the Bible study this way. Recently, our nation spent a day of reflection. We observed the 17th anniversary of September 11th when there was that attack on New York City. During one of the news broadcasts on that anniversary, a commentator spoke of the apprehension we all felt 17 years ago. We were apprehensive about when the next attack might come and where it might come. And the point that was made by the broadcaster was that we have not seen further terror attacks like the 9-11 attack. Well, why was that? The commentator got it right. He said that even though most Americans have gone back to basically the same level of watchfulness they had before 9-11, there are a few thousand people working diligently to watch for those who are planning more attacks. There have not been more attacks because some people are looking and looking and looking diligently in light of what could come. Well, because you and I understand that kind of a diligent look, we can get our minds around the text here today. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Get your Bible and join me there. I've got a gospel track to show you. And by the way, uh, I don't often say this, but this coming Lord's Day, I'll be preaching in Rogers City, Michigan. Those that are in that area hear us on the broadcast. You may want to find out where that is there at the Baptist Church in Rogers City. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And the one in my hand is one that thousands of people use every single year, not just in the United States, but all over the world. The simple title is The Gift, The Gift. And the focus of this gospel tract is the fact that God presents salvation to us as a gift because it's too precious for us to purchase. We are too dead and filthy in our sin to be able to earn it on our own. So God Almighty, in his love for us, sent his only begotten son and says, here, I offer you salvation, forgiveness of sin as a gift through my work, not yours. All we must do is come and repent of sin, receive Christ as Savior. What a tremendous, simple, straightforward, careful gospel tract, the gift. I use this gospel tract all the time. Now, dear friend, at the end of the program, my announcer will come back on. He will be giving three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Have your pen and paper handy. and Let's become partners in the heartbeat of God, which is to give his gospel message to every person on the planet. That is his message. We cannot give the gospel to the wrong person. And this tool, the gift, will help you. If you jot down our contact information and give us your name and address, we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. There's over 40 tracts there. Let me send it to you. You're going to find many of those tracts are going to be helpful to you to hand out to people. Read them first. They'll help you become sharper in telling the gospel yourself. 
Let's become partners today. You can, by the way, go to our website, which is Bible Tracks inc.org that word tracks is spelled t r a c t s bible tracks inc.org and you can order that free sample packet there online if your bible is open to second peter chapter 3 verse 14 simply says this wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's our verse for today. My plan was to deal with the entirety of verse 14 yesterday, but I I got caught up in the first of three words beginning with the letter L. Yesterday, I focused on the fact that God's children are loved. We are loved by God, and we love one another. And this love enables us, helps us to follow Christ as we wait for the day when perfect righteousness shall be brought in by God. And in case you're not sure what that's all about, that's the day when the world will be destroyed by fire and eternity begins. God's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And that's the first idea here of you and I walking and following God while we live in a crooked and perverse day because we know of God's love for us, because we have the fellowship of love between one another, we're enable ourselves to walk through life even though it's not a day of righteousness. But there's two more words beginning with the letter L. They are the words look and the word life. Let's go to the second word, the word look, based here on verse 14. Verse 14 says in part this, seeing we are looking for such things, be diligent. Stop right there. Now, because we know of the coming day of eternal righteousness and because we look for it, or we could say we anticipate it with joy, that look moves us to act diligently. Just as those who watch for those terror attacks, they do their job with diligence, so we live with an, an, an earnestness, a, a deliberateness, and the word is, implies here a sense of speed. We act quickly. We act right now. By the way, this word is the one that's used over in 2 Timothy 2.15, where it is translated by the word study. You and I, as part of our diligent looking, are to quickly, deliberately go to God's word. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You and I need to be putting effort into finding out what God's word says. That is certainly a part of our diligent looking as we anticipate the day of righteousness coming in. Well, we've dealt with love. We've dealt with look. Now let's come to the word life, still here in verse 14. I'm, again, reading part of verse 14. It says this, that we may be found of him in peace without spot, and blameless. I'm going to read that again. That we may be found of him, capital H here, that we may be found of him, of God, in peace, without spot, and blameless. Those two little words, of him, means that the quality of life talked about here is what God wants to see. Being found of him means to be seen by him. So what does God want to see when he looks at us? Here's what God says he's looking for. Three things. Peace, spotlessness, and blamelessness. Those are the three words that are there in verse 14. Let's take them one at a time. The word peace. Now, by the way, these three words, peace, spotlessness, and blamelessness, these words, whenever I read them, remind me of Philippians 2, 15. That verse says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. The peace here refers to living, you and I living a life that reflects God's peace, even though our world is crooked, it's perverse, and it's a world worthy of God's judgment. Our world and the sinners in it are becoming more and more gross in how they practice sin. You know it, and I know it, and frankly, so do they. The world seems almost like, well, they live like God really is dead. Yet as believers, we know God is not dead and that he will come. So you and I function day by day, you and I who know Christ, we function day by day under his truth 
with his love and enjoying his peace. Things are okay. Although the world is, seems to be careening out of control, God is in control, and we can be at peace with his control. The next word here is spotless. God wants to look at us and find us without spot. The word here means of a, refers to a defect in something. It's the word that's used back in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, and there it's describing the Lord Jesus Christ. When it comes to anything to deal with sin, Jesus was spotless. He was and is sinless. Now, do you and I as believers ever sin? Yes, we do. But guess what else we also do? We also quickly call out for forgiveness, and we don't let a momentary sin become a life pattern so that God can see us as spotless. And the final word used here is blameless. Let me tell you quickly that when I was a child, my next older brother and I often got blamed for something that the other one did. We got blamed by our parents, but fairly quickly the truth would come out and our parents would apologize to one or the other of us. Well, listen, listen, friend, the world we live in hates the gospel The world crucified our Savior, even though Pilate found no fault in him. Blameless means to be without, listen now, the word is justifiable cause. There's no justifiable reason for you and I to deal with reproach and shame. Was Jesus called a wine bibber, a drunk? Yes, he was. But guess what? Being labeled a drunk didn't make him one. There was no justifiable evidence or proof that he was a drunkard. He wasn't a drunkard. Might you and I ever be blamed for things we did not do because the one doing the blaming hates our life being lived for Christ? The answer is yes. That's been going on for hundreds of years. But God is seeing our life. He sees the truth. He sees our blamelessness, and it's the eyes of Almighty God. He's the only set of eyes that we need to be concerned about. Amen? Now, listen to me. Today, if you're listening as a believer, we have our calling for today, tomorrow, and Sunday to be people that live in peace, spotless, and blameless. That's our calling. We can do this because we are enabled by the truth of God and the indwelling spirit of God. But if you're listening without Jesus Christ as Savior, God sees you too. He has a book, a more than one set of books, but one of the books keeps a record of your sin. Someday you will be judged. You'll be cast into the lake of fire and there'll be no attorney that can get you off because his justice will be correct. It'll be righteous. The only remedy for the righteous judgment of God sending sinners to hell is the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sin. You need a Savior. There's only one. His name is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. If you've never received him, you need to do that today. Right now, as a matter of fact, bow your head and heart, cry out to him for mercy, and he will abundantly pardon you. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.